Hey everyone, welcome back to this channel. I hope you're well. Um, this is the old installment of Revolutions, which you know how it works. I'm just going to show you some records I've been playing recently, as in this past week. Um, yeah, so, um, you know, um, I've got a a range of things but it's mostly jazz i would say today a little bit of ambient a little bit of electronic and i'll talk about some gigs i've been to as well which um you know always cool to actually see some live music um i'm planning a video on record collecting as a whole if you have some questions uh you would like me to tackle in the video like certain aspects of collecting quote unquote can you write in the comments um some questions for me uh it'll be great because that will give me some direction in you know what to talk about um if you can be bothered that is um and but if you have anything that's you know you, you wonder about my approach or whatever just put the question in and i shall do my best to answer uh, in a video um, this is Sunday morning as with every Sunday morning I start with classical music because it's just a great time because I you know every day I, I, I leave this house for work at 6 30 in the morning so I don't have the time to really play records but on Sunday so Sunday you know you can just put records on and just you know <clears throat> get maximum enjoyment um, Start with this one today, uh, Franz Schubert, complete trios and piano, violin, uh, pia piano, violin and cello by the uh, Beaux-Arts Trio. Um, it's nothing to see really. It's on Philips. It's like a, a double, double set, I think, um, which, I mean, the Beaux-Arts Trio is an um, um, American ensemble uh, and they're just i mean you know like you can buy anything recorded by these guys and it will sound cool uh <laughs> that's just a terrible description it's beautiful it's mesmerizing it's 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 sublime playing um and schubert is one of my favorites and i think uh string quartets or trios like that with piano and strings they're a really good way to get into a composer you know if you if you want to approach it and you don't know where to go, you know, I would say with just about any composer, you can, you know, you can find the essence of their, of their work within this sort of string quartet or, 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 or trio work. Um, and just after that, I play this wonderful, exquisite piece of um, music, which is um, various pieces by Schubert, uh, Hayden, Paganini and Dvorak, uh, which again are in the same four squarely in the same kind of category. Uh, Mihaly uh, Viris, uh was a uh, Hungarian uh, cellist, as you can see, and super, super classy. I mean, you know, presented by the EOD Menuhin Foundation. What else do you want? It's just a, an absolutely phenomenal piece of recording uh and just just very light touch very lovely and this is one i've been playing recently i think that this one was from last week that i played this great you know uh two cd comp i mean do i need to uh, introduce uh miroslav rostopovich maybe the greatest cellist that ever lived maybe uh is, is but you've got all these i mean it's got yet another version of my favorite piece ever the uh, cello concerto by Dvorak so I've got like 10 version of and there's another version on this and <sighs> what can I say um I've been digging back seriously into my shelves just like seriously like you know going back into sections of my shelves where I haven't explored um I don't try to you know revisit things that are pretty much forgotten and I went into the Euro jazz I have a, a section called Euro, Euro jazz European jazz I don't mix my US jazz with my European jazz I know it's weird but that's how I do it 
you know, if you want to ask me questions, there's a, there's a, there's a question for you. And I've just gone back into and picked a few titles that I hadn't played for a while. Um, Alan Twelve Trees, you know, like an sort of an obscure classic on MPS Records. Uh, just a beautiful jazz fusion record. I mean, that's that's what you would. Um, you have, okay, uh, Charlie Mariano on sax. You've got uh, Zbigi Sefert on violin. I mean. You've ever heard like these solo records is just amazing. Jan Hammer on piano, Jack Bruce on bass, uh, John Marshall on drums. You know, so an all-star band. Just a great, very dynamic fusion album, and uh, um, you know, like very distinctive sort of tone that Charlie Mariano has on this very sort of high pitch. Just you know, genius, genius. Um, here's a record I hadn't played for years. You know, I've had this for over ten, uh, over ten years. I don't know exactly. I say over ten years because I've um, put a lot of my records on Discogs ten years ago, and you know that was in the first the first batch of records that I put on Discogs. That was that was one of them. So I'm just saying squarely over ten years ago, but I don't know exactly. Um, uh, Easy by Wojciech Karak. Um, Wojciech Karak is uh, with keyboards player from Poland. This is Polish jazz, it's fine. It's very, very funky, very sort of uh, psychedelic as well. Um, you know, listen to um, A Day in the City, the opener, just give you a, a good a good idea. Very sort of jazz fusion meets funky fusion meets, you know, just pure, you know, joyous. You know, breaks and all, it's it's a superb record, easy. Um, and then I just got into a groove of playing a lot of like cello or double bass records. Uh, like this, this week, I revisited, uh, this to me is a masterpiece. Jean-Charles Capon, L'Univers Solitude on Sarava. This is an original uh, pressing on Sarava. This was reissued by Souffle Continue um, and it's very worth getting. Um, it's um, a, a two people affair. Uh, we've got Jean Charles Capon who plays very mournful cello uh, lines, just um, again very elegant but but super super inventive. And we have Pierre Favre uh, who plays percussion there. And again, he's I mean, if you look at his rig, I mean. You can tell a lot by, yeah. and the guy is in just a genius jazz drummer. So we have the, the the meeting of minds of two greats of the of of the French jazz scene, and it's just you know, it, it's just a record that defies classification. It's kind of like a jazz record, but it has very defined classical elements, and also it's very sort of like experimental, very improvised. So just take a listen. I revisited this beautiful uh, Camellia uh, record. I've spoken about this record, I think, a number of times this channel, uh, which is from last year or the year before, I think it's 2023. When I posted about this, he contacted me directly in the messages, which was really cool. Phantom uh, Future, to me, is one of the very best records of the past few years. I really, really, really love this. Again, defies classification. It's Henri Texier comes to mind, but it's very experimental and, you know, the way he uses the double bass um, as a, a rhythmic instrument is very, um, it, it's very original, I think. I mean, again, Texier comes to mind, very, very beautiful. And staying in the, in the world of double bass, this is, again, exquisite. Uh, ECM... Maybe a bit of an obscure classic as well. Um, Dave Olin and Barry Phillips music for two basses. It just does what it says on the tin, basically. Um, you have those two absolute giants of the uh, the bass, the double bass, and they just collide into beautiful impressionistic pieces. Very avant-garde at times, very jarring at times, but uh, always kind of forward thinking and pushing the limits. Um, uh, the opener is called Improvised Piece Number One, and it just gives you a, a sense of 
the meanderings and the sort of um, energy that the two of them bounce off each other. It's it's uh, it's absolutely superb. Don't know how easy this is to get as a record, uh, but I mean, all the same, very very good. Uh, another ECM buried gem, uh, Gary Burton. Uh, uh, music by Michael Gibbs, Michael Gibbs, in, uh, UK musician, arranger, composer, uh, and we've got here uh, um, Gary Burton on vibra harp, um, Steve Swallow on bass, Ted uh, Sebs on drums. So, and then you've got this orchestra, the the uh, symphony. Uh, Orchestra of Hamburg, direct, conducted by Michael Gibbs. So you've got a jazz band doing, you know, some very sort of fusion etudes, and you've got a, an overlay of beautiful orchestra in the background. I don't think I've seen anyone show this record before. I, mean, I can't recall anybody talk, talking about this, but I think you should check it. It's one of the first ECMs to somebody stuck a virgin <laughs> record sticker there for no reason it's it's okay i don't really care i'm not playing the cover am i uh just lovely lovely ecm records uh, there's no tracks of this on youtube you can't listen to this on youtube um so you know um throb is a is a very i might if i can be bothered i might put a little segment but the problem is that with this, it not being on YouTube, at least in Australia, it's not. Maybe in Europe, maybe it's a copyright thing. Maybe in Europe or in America, you can listen to it, but we can't hear. Um, but you know, it, it's it's worth listening. Throb, throb, throb is really great. Uh, I revisited this amazing Euro jazz. It's phenomenal. I kind of savvy. Eddie Lewis, who is. Uh, Undoubtedly, the genius of uh, Hammond organ in France is the is the, uh, the the Jimmy Smith, the the the, um, the Larry Young, uh, the French Larry Young, the French Jimmy Smith, um, and this on MPS is a very very uh, worth checking that record. You have John Sermon on sax and Daniel Hume on drums, and this is just it's a it's a it's a blowing session it's just it's like it, it's dynamite absolutely dynamite um and again i'd play you some more but um i feel that um you know the video would last like three times the amount i a shout out to my good friend enders in stockholm um and this is a record that he sent me many 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 years ago again i think over 10 years ago Enders, if you're watching this this is the hapless child and other inscrutable stories. Uh, it is a Michael Mantler uh, arrangement, uh, but it's largely a, it's largely a Robert Wyatt uh, thing, you know, because he sings for most of the record. Um, and you can see the uh, the cast there, fantastic cast of Jack Jeanette and Terz Ribdoll and Steve Swallow and Carla Blay. Uh, very worthy. I was listening to it the other because I was in a mood to listen to it some Robert Wyatt because I've been playing this a lot recently. Uh, Nick Mason's fictitious sports. For those of you who don't know, this is a, an absolute must, must, must. Have. If you like Robert Wyatt, get this record. It is just sensational. It's Robert Wyatt. Um, singing in a band led by obviously Pink Floyd's Nick Mason uh, that's the he's the he's the main man there but you've got again Carla Blay on this one you've got Steve Swallow again it's kind of the same cast as this more or less well, not exactly but um but I think this record is so melodic I mean like Siam I was wrong track number two Siam listen to Siam Siam is it's just amazing. Do ya uh, track six? Just an absolute. It this is as good as the best Robert White records. Like I'm not kidding. It's 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 just it's of that level. Um, 
I bought some records from a, a good friend, Anthony Camplone. He, he's got, he's selling off his record collection. And uh, the other day I just, I just bought a few records from him that I was interested in. Uh, for instance, I, I bought this, uh, his copy of uh, Dancing in Your Head by uh, Ornette Coleman, which, is, which was one of these uh, Ornettes that I, I didn't have in any form. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I knew the record uh, from listening to it online, but it's very catchy and it's, uh, it's uh, I mean, it's from 1977, I think. You know, it's Ornit Coleman at the uh, on on the edge of of punk, really. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, just yeah, it's it's just a very melodic free jazz record. So it's very sort of you got the impression that you want to have fun on this, and and the, the cover sh they sh show that quite a bit. Um, I bought his copy of this Joan Brockine record um special identity again jazz fusion record with eddie gomez and jack dijonet um so you know um yeah very fusiony you know um it's not a million miles of you know a bill evans record from that time but um but i think joan brookin is very very underrated I, I i just feel that she's not she's not given uh a credit she she is an amazing pianist and I mean, I'm just saying, I'm just riffing. Um, and uh, this, which um, I'm really chuffed having a copy of, uh, this is one of the, surely one of the highlights of the uh, Steeple Chase label, uh, the Camel, Michael Carvin, Cecil Bridgewater, Sonny, uh, Sonny Fortune, this I knew because of the Steeple Chase uh, spiritual jazz compilation um, from Jazzman, which I think is uh, it's just flawless. It's a beautiful comp, and there's um, there's this version of Naima on on there, which I, I always thought was kind of like bewitching. It's just a beautiful version of the way he infuses his own, his own identity in in this modal jazz form. It's you know I think. I think he does he does its real justice um you know i just i just feel that um you know it's it's for a drummer he, he certainly is very very acutely aware of of the sense of you know the melodic sense of coltrane and how that drives the you know you know, it drives the, the, the agenda on, 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 certain, on some of his records, you know. So this is a beautiful record uh, from 1975, highly recommended. I'm going to finish off with a bunch of uh, singer-songwriter, avant-garde, experimental electronic records and stuff like that. So this is the odd ball in the, in the lot. I, I, I replayed this the other day. Um, I love this record, uh, Since There Were Circles by Bob Lind, 1971. It is just like an, you know, a, a under the radar singer-songwriter record. If you like uh, Jim Sullivan, if you like, gosh, um, his voice has got a very sort of like gothic kind of quality. Um, not a million miles away from someone like David Ackles, but, you know, I don't like David Ackles, I'm going to say this. Uh, but he's got his voice has got this kind of like almost you know um yeah yeah somber dark quality um if you like like singer songwriter records by i know anyone from neil young to um you know um like this kind of early 70s and it's it's a little bit baroque baroque folk as well in in places uh, this is a killer, killer record. Since there were circles, I would highly recommend. Here is a little oddball from Brazil. Maria Rita. Uh, it's called Brasileira, I, I believe this record. Uh, Maria Rita Stumpf, as the name is. Um, the um, Brazilian 
I won't say I want to say singer songwriter, but but it doesn't really like that. Very hard to define record. This record, it's kind of like a Brazilian infused art pop record it's from 1988. Ambient pop, art pop comes to mind. Um, you know, it's kind of a Brazilian sort of Kate Bush esque record, but not really. Um, the first song, Cantico Brasileiro, number three, uh, there, the first song would give you a really, really great idea of forward thinking and the sort of pop that she plays, you know, it's like a, a, a Brazilian Julia Halter or sorts, you know, like if you like that kind of sound, uh, you know, it, it's fantastic, this record. And that's the reissue that came out a couple of years ago, which I think you can get very easily. Um, last weekend, not uh, this Friday, just gone, but the Friday before, I went to see Michel Rota, Michael Rotha, as he's known in the VC. The, uh, the principal um, composer of the, uh, the band Noi, well, I mean, you know, it's, it's a two, two people affair. Uh, Michael Rother on uh, guitar and Klaus Dinger on drums and I went to see him with my with my friend uh, at the Recital Centre in Melbourne and I reckon it was easily one of the best gigs we both came out of the gig thinking oh my god what did we see it was just like it's Noi and Harmonia and solo Michael Rother but displayed with such vigour with such verve with such passion and and no my friend was saying no showboating it's like he's behind his he's got a he's got a, a table with effects he's got his guitar he doesn't talk between songs he just he's just very focused his band is amazing the drama was just out of this world uh i feel i've seen no life i mean you know it's not like i've seen there's one member of Noi and then nothing it was Noi. i mean i think if you have the chance of seeing uh, Michelle Hotta, just go, jump at the chance. I'll put a bit of footage uh, there for you. They played a beautiful version of um, of a few of the songs from Noise Seventy Five. Um, the Youngies, my God! Um, they played um, a, a piece of uh, Z uh, Zealand, which is just oh my God! Like it was, Hello Gallo was played, Cats and Music, oh, so many. I think they play Dino as well from music from Harmonia. It's just, okay, I'll just put an extract there, a, a, a piece of, of footage there. Okay, I hope you enjoy this uh, little uh, piece of, uh, of Noi. I also went to see uh, Friday night, uh, Friday just gone. I, I, also, I also went to see um, a Rouge Aftab at the recital center as well. Again, Totally, totally, totally bewitching gig. Absolutely, just oh, she is such a singer, and she has a band with um, uh, the guitar player is uh, Gian or Gian. I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, Riley. He's the son of Terry Riley. He's easily the best guitar player I've ever seen on stage. He's just it was just his chops on classical guitar were unbelievable and again i'll leave a bit of footage there and um you can you know enjoy a little bit of arusha stab <laughs>
she was great she was funny she just yeah she had it all she's just a great gig if you have the chance go and see Rouge of Tap she played the album Vulture Prince in its entirety fantastic enjoy okay um, I'll move on uh, and I'll just finish off with a few sort of ambient records I was playing this beautiful EP by David Sylvian, Words with the Shaman, uh, with John Hassel, Steve Jensen, and Olga Tsukai. I mean, it's an all-star cast, a three-track. Again, we're in, in, we're firmly in fourth world universe. I mean, it's, you know, John Hassel being in the band. You, you, you know, you'll get, if you like these kind of, you know, Peter Gabriel, mid-80s, or, you know, Japan, um, I mean, David Sylvian uh, records like Secrets of the Beehive. I mean, this is really definitely B for you. And it's it's um, it's just a little cheap record that you can find just about anywhere. Um, here is a record that nobody talks about and people should. This is a fantastic album. Incantation. Incantation. Incantations. Sorry. Mike Oldfield. Everybody talks about Two Rebels. But this record, my God, this is just another universe it's a double album and it just takes a little while to for you to get into it but side b with the vocals of maddie Pryor, uh, sally orfield and the queen's college girls choir uh there it, it just brings you into a very sort of ethereal universe you know it's not unlike like the uh, the mystère des voix bulgares it, it has a it's a very underrated record that's all i'm going to say it's from, I think, the uh, 1978, so the late 70s, on Virgin. Uh, it's just a superb record. Uh, and who's on trumpet there? Mike Laird, uh, Pierre Morlin from Gong is on vocals as well, on uh, vibraphone, sorry. A couple more. Here's a little obscurity that I've revisited. I bought this during COVID. The Slow Dancing Society, the uh, Disappearing Collective Volume 1. This is a, a lovely ambient record, very slow moving, uh, kind of like uh, the um, kind of like what? Kind of like a, a little bit of a Vangelis, but very much more ambient version of Vangelis, like kind of like slow moving. Um, little bit of you know instrumentation that just floats there it's got this is a gorgeous record nobody really would uh, pay attention to these guys but I, they've made lots of albums and this is one of them and the last one is again like in the i was talking about fourth world i was talking about john hassel he's a he's a, a modern fourth world record uh dk the gate of enlightenment i think he's a french artist from memory um, and it's just, uh, yeah, it really is fourth world again, that is definitely rooted in a sort of John Hassel kind of sound palette. It's, um, um, came out in 2021. I, I, I would probably listen to it online if I were you and make my own mind up. All right. That's my, uh, weekly uh, rotations. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, sorry, I was rambling. It's very hot it's, uh, in here, so um, I'm, uh, I'm doing my best here. Uh, take care. Leave me some comments. Talk to me. You know, blah, blah, blah. Love you all.